welcome to Little Literati. I'm Jess and these are the books that I'm planning to read in the month of March of 2017. Last month in February I mentioned that I read the Splintered series and Roseblood by A.G. Howard and so this month I decided to look into her latest series, the Haunted Hearts Legacy series. This is book number one, The Architect of Song, and as far as I know this is not a retelling of any stories. This is, I'm pretty sure, an entirely original story, but it's about a deaf girl named Juliet and a ghost. And somehow when she touches a flower, she's able to hear the ghost singing a song that only her deaf ears can hear. And so I don't know very much about the story so far, but the premise sounded really interesting. And so I decided to go ahead and give it a whirl since I enjoyed her other books. This is A Whole New World. This is the Aladdin retelling by Liz Braswell. I read As Old as Time last month, and even though I didn't read Once Upon a Dream, I decided that the Aladdin one kind of sounded like fun. So the question for this one is, what if Aladdin had never found the lamp? And so I thought I would give this one a try as well. And if I enjoy this one like I enjoyed As Old as Time, I probably will give Once Upon a Dream a try maybe next month. This is Worlds of Ink and Shadow. This is, a, I'm pretty sure, a fantasy story involving the Bronte siblings. So as far as I was able to tell from the description of the story, the all of the siblings in their youth really did write these different, these two different fantasy worlds. And this story posits that they have the ability to bring those worlds to real life and to make them real and that it takes energy to bring those worlds to reality. And so that is why the siblings all die very, very young, which is both a really fun idea and also really, really tragic. So I don't know quite now how I'm going to react to this, but I really love Bronte, Charlotte Bronte's work. And so I'm really hoping I enjoy this fantasy about her life and those of her siblings. This is the Star Touched Queen. This is the first in at least a duology. I don't know how many books are gonna be in the series. The second one I'm pretty sure comes out actually this month in March, which is The Crown of Wishes, I think is what that's called. Um, I came across this because I have read all of Sarah J. Moss's books that she has released so far, and she had mentioned in her newsletter that she really enjoyed this series. And so I figured if I enjoy her books that much, then maybe I should give a try to the books that she enjoys reading. So I thought I would give this one a shot and then hopefully if I really enjoy this then I can get the Crown of Wishes as soon as that gets released. I had hoped to be able to read King's Cage last month but I wasn't able to quite get to this in time. I did read a lot of other things last month so I've, I'm giving myself time to get to read this one. This is the third book in the Red Queen series, and apparently it's not a trilogy. There's going to be at least another book from what I hear. So I have a little bit of mixed feelings about that. I was sort of hoping this was going to tie everything together and resolve all of the conflicts. Apparently that's not going to be the case, but hopefully it's a good story anyway and moves the plot along. So I am hoping that King's Cage will be really a fun read this month. This is Empress of a Thousand Skies. I got this in my fairy loot box last week, and I'm looking forward to being able to read that now that the month has changed. And so this one sounds interesting. There's a princess or a queen or an empress or something. She's royalty. And somehow she disappears and it is made to look like she has been murdered by this certain person. In reality, she has not been murdered, and the person that's been accused of her murder is actually helping her try to get her planet back. So that sounds pretty interesting. It sounds like it'll be exciting. As we mentioned with Flashfall last month, I'm not a huge science fiction girl. I'd really, I'd really rather prefer a fantasy story, but I'm hoping that this will be action and fun enough that I really enjoy the story. It sounds like it'll be fun. This is Swimming Lessons. This is the last of my Book of the Month Club books that I got in December of last year. And this one sounded kind of sad. From what I remember of the description, there's a mom 
who is unhappy in her life and she decides to change that and I don't know exactly how she's gonna go about changing that I don't know if she's just gonna decide to leave or if she's actually gonna try to resolve problems in her personal life uh, so this sounded a little iffy to me because I am a mom and of course there are things I wish I could change about my life but for the most part I'm pretty happy in my life so I don't know if I'll love this book but it was also the most interesting of the options for that month and so I decided to give it a try but I've also been a little bit afraid to start this which is why it's taking me two and a half months to pick this up but um, I'm hoping to get ahead go ahead and finish reading this this month and hopefully it's as good as everyone said it was. These next two books I bought sight. I haven't read them and I've read some of the books by the author though. This is the, these are by Josie S. Kilpack and these are historical proper romances and I've read several of the proper romance line and then I mentioned in a previous video the steampunk proper romance which was Beauty and the Clockwork Beast. So these two are historical and these are about true love stories between famous authors and their sweethearts. So this is Forever and Forever, which features the real life courtship of Henry W. Longfellow, who wrote Evangeline, which is where I got the name of my oldest daughter, and his sweetheart, Fanny Appleton, in the year 1836. And then this one is The Lady of the Lakes, which is a reference to The Lady of the Lake by Sir Walter Scott. And so this is a book about Sir Walter Scott and it says his first love and his best love. And so there's a girl named Mina Stewart and another one who is Charlotte Carpenter. And this is also in the 1800s or possibly the late 1700s. But uh, he, this is going to resolve the idea between the best love versus the first love. And so these both sound like they'll be something that will, I will really enjoy because these are about true people. They're also about authors and their lives instead of just the stories that they've told. So I'm really looking forward to reading these and I'm hoping that I am glad that I bought them. I also bought these next two books without having read them and that's very rare for me, although this month apparently I seemed to have done that a lot, but these are the first two books in a trilogy and I was actually at Barnes & Noble and found the third book and it looked really interesting so I decided to look into the, sec the first two and then I decided just to buy them because the story sounded fun. So these, it's The Midnight Queen is first and then Lady of Magic and then the third book is Season of Spells and my library hasn't received it yet but I'm hoping to check that out soon. If I love these I'll probably buy the third one. But uh, the premise is that the, these are an alternate history Regency period with magic. So that is something that I really, really enjoy the idea of. And I actually have two series upstairs in my bedroom on my shelf that feature kind of that idea. I have the glamorous histories that the first one is Shades of Milk and Honey. And that's also a Regency period where they have magic and it's just an everyday, it's a lady skill that women are supposed to try to cultivate. And then I also have the Magicians and Mrs. Quint trilogy upstairs. And that one is not so much our history Regency period, but it's a parallel world's history of kind of the Regency type period, also with magic. And so there's, and that one, there's a lot of nods to various literary figures that we've had and historical figures. And I think that was a lot of fun as well. So this seemed like it was definitely up my alley. Apparently in this series, women are not supposed to be practicing magic, and yet there's going to be the daughter of a mage who's going to play a really big part. So I really thought that sounded like a lot of fun. I decided to buy the first two books, and then if I like these, I'll buy the third book as well. So I'm looking forward to reading these. This last book that I have here is one that I own, and I've owned for several years, and I've read it several times. This is The Thirteenth Tale which is really kind of creepy and gothic and fun and it's literary as well because this is about an author, a fictional author of course, and a girl who comes to interview her about a missing story from her book of 
tales. And this author always tells a different story to the different journalists that come to interview her. And so she promises to tell this young lady the true story, but can we really trust her? And she weaves this really fascinating story. This was the first book that I ever read that I remembered thinking, this ties up all the loose ends. There is nothing hanging out anymore that is left unresolved. This fixes it all. And I have really enjoyed this story every time I've read it in my young adulthood and now even as an adult. And the reason I'm reading it this month is because it's my turn to host book club next month. And so I gave the girls in my club an option of four different books and this was the one that they decided to read. So I'm going to reread it so that I can refresh the story in my mind and I can be ready to host and ask questions about what they thought about the book. And fortunately it actually contains a book club guide in the back as well if I get stumped. But I remember really enjoying this and there's a lot of mystery. It's actually approached as a ghost story, which is a lot of fun. And so there, it's got all the different elements that make it really a fascinating, wonderful story, especially for the literary set. So The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Sutterfield. I really, really recommend this story and it's creepy and it's fun and oh, it's, it's everything. I've also got two more books on hold that I'm hoping will arrive here in the next couple of days. And that is Ash and Bramble and then the sequel Rose and Thorn. And they are a another set of retellings of fairy tales. So the first one I'm pretty sure is Sleeping Beauty or Snow White actually. I think it might be Snow White and I think the second one is Sleeping Beauty. Not quite sure on that. But anyway, sounded like they will be fun. They're also kind of an entirely different take on fairy tales based on the descriptions and they sounded like a lot of fun. So I decided to request those. But I only did that yesterday, so they haven't had a chance to get to my library yet. So hopefully I will get a chance to get those done as well as all these for the month of March. And if you have any books that you think I should read in the next month or two, please let me know in the description below. If you have any books that you're really excited to read in the next month or two, please let me know. And if you've read these, let me know what you thought, think or thought about them. Um, if you have any video responses, please share them. I would love to have any comments. I'd love to have discussions below. So in the meantime, read wonderful books this month and let me know what you think about them. Thank you. Bye.